Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm here back with my guy, Sir Love. How you guys doing? Today we got a topic for you guys, which is basically where this music industry is going. If you looked at some of these deals lately, you, some people might have heard about Gucci Mane getting a $10 million deal, XX Tentacion getting a $6 million deal. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Somebody just got a $4 million deal. Almost like two people, I think, got a $4 million um, deal recently. Nipsey. About Nipsey, I don't know how much he got paid, but just the fact that Nipsey Hustle is actually signing with somebody. Mm -hmm. All of these things are indicative of something to, to come. So we're gonna talk about where the industry is going because seeing that kind of money given out to artists is not what you've seen for a good amount of time. Yep. And we're gonna talk about why. So first, sir, I wanna um, just get your opinion on what those deals are showing and what they mean to you when you see stuff like that. It means this is gonna be growth in the game. Um, it means that there's uh, the industry is doing a northern trajectory or an upward trajectory. Um, I have this conversation with investors. Um, a lot of times people will bring me in to have investor conversations for them and mm -hmm. speak to the people that are going to be cutting the checks. And a lot of times I show graphs and documents and things of that nature that showcase and forecast where the freaking bread is going. And uh -huh. it's not surprising to me. The game has been on a north on an upward trend yep. for a while now. Um, streaming has definitely changed the game. I think streaming is going to lead to more success than we've ever seen in music history. So we all have we all know about the golden age of music, which was the 90s and things of that nature when CDs, people were buying four or five CDs at a time um, to listen to them in multiple places. I think streaming is yeah. actually going to beat that and we're going to live in a completely different ecosystem where for the first time consumption is going to be tracked from the moment a record is first broken and heard to the moment it blows up and is all over the place to years later when the artist is dead and gone and the record is still making money. Um, there's a lot of bread to be made. A whole lot of bread to be made. So I could basically echo those things. When we, what is this, the what the industry is going with streaming, I know a lot of people didn't think it was great at first, but really consumption is at an all time high, but we've been missing out on that consumption, right? Mm -hmm. We've been making less money with more consumption. Now the money being made is gonna really lead a lot back closer towards the amount of consumption that's going down, which is more than yeah. the 90s, which means more money will be in this game. And you're seeing deals like deals that people have started to be making because for, for one, if you look at artists like Gucci Mane, um, X, uh, Nipsey Hussle, they have a little, their, their situations are a little bit more stable, right? Yeah. So when record labels rec recognize that, they say, okay, this is something we can invest in. They have a lot more leverage, but on top of that, also, when they're looking at the fact that these streaming numbers are going to be coming in, streaming is going to increase. It's still There's yep. still a lot of young people, right, who have not adopted streaming yet because they don't even have credit cards and things like that. But a lot of these, this SoundCloud audience, is as they get older in age, people are going to be moving into streaming as that's just going to be the new norm for yep. a lot of people. Yeah, 100% agree. And you got to understand that it's easier to forecast the value. So when you look at someone, you say, why is he getting a $4 million check? Yep. Well, when you start to, uh, I know oh, yeah. you've done a video on streaming. Come I've done on, a video yeah. on my channel about streaming. And I know in mine, I calculated, you know, based off of this channel, this channel, yep. this channel, this channel, this channel, how much you get per stream, yep. right? When you start doing those type of calculations and you start looking at an artist's number, it gets real easy to project, hey, if I sign this artist for three albums, well, the last two albums that he did on his own with no marketing, real marketing capital he was able to generate x amount of streams which yep. are worth x amount of dollars so if i put x amount of new dollars in that artist it's a chance that i should be able to at least break even off the previous fan base that they've already built and then you got to think think uh, factor in it they're probably going to eat a little bit on the publishing they're mm -hmm. probably going to eat a little bit on well publishing royalties all that they, they might eat a little bit on some 360 if they have exactly. some type of 360 scenario right. so you know there's multiple ways for them to get their cash back and so they get have more confidence in putting their cash out there yeah and you're talking about real-time graphs that yeah. are going to be available here as all this stuff is tracked on streaming so with that kind of thing happening sir talked about the projections being a lot more accurate mm -hmm. that's just going to be some there's something called predictable revenue right if you guys don't know this is something that's very common in the tech industry when you see anything that's subscription-based model it's predictable revenue so that means all right i have 100 customers and they're paying 
ten dollars um ten dollars a month right those ten dollars times a hundred customers means a thousand dollars per month multiply that by twelve that's twelve thousand dollars a year right. right and they just scale that scale that out that's why companies like Netflix and all them all them subscription companies have such high about um, valuations it's not going to be the exact same when you look at artists because people aren't subscribing directly to artists they're describe they're subscribing to these streaming platforms but they will be able to create a lot more predictability when it comes to these formulas and how they calculate what an artist is going to put out on top of that when we talk about listening sir also mentioned breaking your record imagine a world where for one consumption is going to be almost like just a second layer of skin like there's these barriers of yeah like just all right i go pay for the album i you know i get my check ready and all that kind of stuff that's that's no more right you already own the platform you're already paying ten dollars a month and it's going to be a subscription for Spotify, so you're not even thinking about it. So really, you just go get what you want. It's going to feel like I just go get what I want. There's no barrier and let happening. Me give you, let me give you a great example of that. So years ago, if you wanted lights in your house, you had to use kerosene, right? Yeah. So kerosene was actually something that you had to physically go to the store, buy, yep. fill it up, and, and, and power your, your, your house when it came to lights and uh -huh. electricity and all the different things that you wanted. This was the norm at one time. It would have been awkward for a person to say, wait, you're telling me I have to pay every month for lights no matter what? Are they going to oh, cut them off? Oh, no. You, know, you would have had some older generation rebelling against that, right? Yeah, exactly. But in the future, music is the same way. So, right, you know, we're coming from a time period where we were downloading records and we're paying a dollar for them or we were illegally stealing the records. And now we're going to a place where, you know, a $10, $7, $12, $14, maybe $15, I think music can actually potentially get up to, you know, anywhere between $20 to $60 depending on how these companies are consolidated in the future but that will become a regular bill just like you pay your internet bill just like you pay your, your, your electric bill just, mm -hmm. you don't look at these things as you know luxuries you look at it like I need electricity um, and I think music is going to get in that space as time begins to progress and which opens up the door for a lot of revenue to be made um, it also forces a lot of conversations around yeah. the legality of you know as companies grow if the users aren't paying how are they going to buy out what is the value of a stream outside of what the streamers think the value gap argument between youtube being that youtube has more streams than any other provider in the yeah. space but they're paying out less than any other provider right. in the space um how is that going to be evaluated in the future if they win that legal battle Oh my God! The number is going to completely. That's fluctuate. going to be crazy. That's you know, going to be super so crazy. It, it's, it's a lot of opportunity. So, like like Sir said, it's going to be the norm, and the, for anybody who can't perceive this being this way with music, just realize we're talking about music, but it's going to be that way with a lot of things. Right. Like there's going to people who who just they pay a subscription for their house to be clean, right? They pay a subscription yeah. like for these grocery delivery services. That's just going that's the direction that we're moving in. Like yeah. things are just going to show up when we want them low barriers to access yeah. to entry. That's just the world we're moving towards. That's a little off topic. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit <laughs> hole, but what I um can say about that is with things being on streaming, when we talk about the idea of being able to be tracked from the moment your record broke and being able to go back and look at the data, imagine a world when now not only do we actually be able to get paid for the streams of, let's say, when a, a, a consumer like buys my project right back in the old day, a consumer buy your project, project, you get that money from that consumer in that way, right? Mm -hmm. Now you translate that to streaming. Okay, whenever my fans listen to my music, I'm getting paid that right. way. But there's another person that you wouldn't necessarily get paid in a lot of ways um, back in the day, which would be a DJ. Yep. A DJ playing your in music the in the store in the, or in the club or just, or just stores like Starbucks playing music. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting paid for those streams too, which back in the day, some of those like the actual big corporate stores you might get paid because uh, they have to go through a more official system but like just a dj playing your stuff in the store or random people you would get paid for that right in the future you're going to get paid for every literally every time you every birthday exactly party, every everything whenever your shit gets yeah. played you will get paid and then you also have to, to look at the fact that uh Concert ticket sales are at an all-time high. Yep. People are attending concerts at, at record numbers. 
um, venues, you know, things of that nature are selling out at, at different rates. Um, so, you know, the sales of uh, tickets have increased. You also look at merchandise sales overall have increased. So you're seeing an increase yeah. in that area. You're also looking at an expense decrease. So you're looking at, you know, back in the, t in the day when they were giving out all these big $4 million, $2 million, $6 million deals, it was taking millions and millions of dollars just to promote and break the record or even create the record. Yeah. Now, you know, the artists are making the records themselves in their home studios or they're making the records in some local studio. Studio. The cost of making a record are extremely low. The cost of uh, putting the record out into the market and distributing it on a worldwide scale mm -hmm. are extremely low. So not only are your revenues increasing, but your expenses are decreasing, which leaves this huge gap. You know, back in the day, you had to pay for it, BET and MTV and all these platforms to, to, to play your records. Yeah. And you don't have to do that anymore. There was a time period where you had to really throw cash at radio. And you yeah. don't even got to do those things anymore. Yeah. So all of your expenses are shrinking and your revenue is increasing increasing um this is going to be a glorious time for the game and that's why the money is flowing like this all right i'm back and i would like to know what you guys think and how you feel about the deals y'all have been seeing lately does that change your perspective on being independent or not does that make making a deal more attractive to you especially when you see people who have been independent and just so successful without a label like Nipsey Hussle eventually signed with the label. What are your thoughts on that? But other than that, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you like it, you might as well share it. But if you ain't subscribed, bruh, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.